So this chlorhexidine was developed in the year 1940s by the Imperial Chemical Industries and in England and initially it was never marketed as a mouthwash or a mouth rinse so it was never used for dental purposes. It was basically used as an antiseptic for skin wounds in the year 1954 and later on only in dentistry it was used as a pre-surgical disinfectant of the mouth. So before you perform a particular surgery you would use the chlorhexidine rinse as a pre-surgical disinfectant and later on it was also used in endodontics. Then the first definitive study done on chlorhexidine was done by Lowe and Shiot in the year 1970s. Now where do we use uh, chlorhexidine? What are the indications? You use it as an adjunct to mechanical oral hygiene in the initial periodontal therapy. So I'm going to repeat this word adjunct again and again because remember when a patient comes to you with deposits and plaque, you just don't give him chlorhexidine and send them off saying that it will help reduce the plaque. No, you have to do your mechanical plaque control, use uh, your hand scalers or ultrasonic scalers to remove the local deposit. You have to tell them how to brush their teeth and use interdental aids and only as an adjunct you use chlorhexidine. Then you can use it during your post-surgical period. So as soon as you remove your periodontal pack, um, you want the area to be maintained plaque free. Uh, but the area is still healing and it's still painful. So the patient will not be able to use any interdental aids. So in that time, you can use chlorhexidine as a post-surgical uh, mouthwash. And chlorhexidine also improves the healing. So this is one more advantage. So it improves healing after routine surgical procedures and in the post-operative management of immediate uh, denture construction. So it can be also used for patients wearing fixed orthodontic appliances. Again, in the interdental area, when you're wearing uh, braces, it's very difficult to clean. So you can use chlorhexidine as an adjunct to your uh, brushing. And also in case of intermaxillary fixation, you can use it in handicapped patients. So in handicapped patients, they lack dexterity. So they're not able to uh, do proper plaque control and maintain their gingival status. So you can always uh, advise them to use chlorhexidine. Then chlorhexidine will help uh, to control plaque accumulation in patients with drug-induced gingival overgrowth. So because of the inflammation of the gingiva, the patient is not able to maintain the oral hygiene properly and clean the areas where there is heavy gingival inflammation. So in such cases, you can give chlorhexidine. You can give them in medically compromised patients. So because chlorhexidine has a bacteriostatic and bactericidal effect, it would uh, basically uh, be helpful in medically compromised patients uh, and in patients who are suffering from local oral infections such as denture-induced stomatitis, aphthous ulcerations, acute ulcerative gingivitis conditions and ultimately it can be used as a prophylactic rinse in the prevention of post-extraction bacteremia. So as soon as you plan an extraction, you can uh, ask the patient to rinse it with, uh, rinse their mouth with chlorhexidine so that it becomes uh, bacterial free and you prevent post-extraction bacteremia and you can also prevent dry socket and reduce the bacterial content of the aerosol spray during ultrasonic scaling. Now coming on to the disadvantage, so we've spoken about so many uses of chlorhexidine but what are the major disadvantages associated with it? The first and the foremost is the extrinsic staining of the teeth. So on a long term use, chlorhexidine imparts these brown stains on the teeth and this basically occurs due to four major re reasons. First is the degradation of the chlorhexidine molecule to release the parachloroaniline. So the chlorhexidine will break down and release these molecules which further cause these brown stains. The second is the catalysis of the Millard reaction. So what happens is that the carbohydrates and the proteins which adhere to the enamel surface, that is they are present in the acquired dental uh, 
biofilm these undergo a series of condensations and polymerization reaction when they come in contact with chlorhexidine and they form these brown pigmented substances and these are called as melanoids and this then gives a brown color to the teeth the third reaction is that chlorhexidine basically causes denaturing of the proteins with metal sulfide formations. So what happens here is that the chlorhexidine causes protein denaturing and breaks down the disulfide bridges and forms highly reactive sulfahydryl groups. So the chlorhexidine is acting on the proteins and breaking them down or denaturing them. Now these sulfhydryl groups will then react to the ferric ions and the polyphenol compounds which are present in the saliva and they produce something called as organic ferric sulfides. Now this organic ferric sulfide will impart a yellowish brown color when it gets deposited on the hard and the soft tissue. So remember chlorhexidine is causing the denaturing of the proteins and this denatured product which is the sulfohydryl groups will then react with the ferric ions and it forms the ferric sulfides and this is imparting the yellowish brown color. Then the last reason why it causes stains on the tooth is that chlorhexidine is anionic in nature. So it is a positively charged molecule. So remember chlorhexidine is cationic in nature that is it's positively charged whereas there, there are certain anionic dietary chromogens like tea, coffee and red wine. So when it acts with the negatively charged food substance and adheres onto the tooth then it imparts the color of these uh, chromogens onto the tooth surface. So the color of the tea, coffee, red wine gets imparted onto the tooth surface. Okay, so the next disadvantages is that chlorhexidine can cause certain uh, allergies in certain individuals. So painful desquamative lesions in the oral cavity can be associated with burning sensation. It can impart taste sensation. So a metallic taste is uh, present to chlorhexidine. Then in certain cases, there is a parotid swellings which are seen, but these are extremely rare. Now, when you vigorously rinse with chlorhexidine, the molecules of chlorhexidine will go and obstruct the parotid gland and as a result the saliva will get accumulated within the duct and within the uh, parotid gland itself so it does not flow into the oral cavity which leads to the swelling of the gland and then it can also cause dryness and soreness of the mucosa now talking about the mechanism of action of chlorhexidine now always remember chlorhexidine has two types of action when it is present in low concentration it acts as a bacteriostatic agent that means it prevents the replication of the bacteria whereas when it is present in high concentration it acts as a bactericidal agent that means it kills or undergoes lysis of the bacteria now when it is present in low concentration what it does is that as I stated before, chlorhexidine is a positively charged molecule. It will get attracted to the negatively charged bacteria. And it basically gets imparted into it and it uh, causes a osmotic disbalance in the bacterial cells and promotes the release of the potassium and the phosphates. So once there is loss of the low molecular weight potassium and phosphates from the bacteria, it is not able to replicate or multiply further. Coming on to the bactericidal action, wherein in high concentration chlorhexidine causes cell death by the process of cytolysis. So it will completely lyse the bacteria itself. So again, how does it happen? Chlorhexidine is a positively charged molecule, it's cationic in nature. So it gets actively or passively transported onto the negatively charged phosphate groups of the microbial cell wall. So bacteria is negatively charged. It then gets incorporated within the bacteria and initially it causes the imbalance, osmotic imbalance. 
and there is loss of potassium and the phosphate ions. So till this stage, it is very similar uh, in what happens with the bacteriostatic nature. But when it is present in high concentration, there is extreme loss of uh, these potassium and phosphate ions and this alters the protein uh, structure. So there is leakage of the adenosine triphosphate nucleic acids and once the proteins inside the uh, cell are denatured then it causes agglutination and clumping uh, in the cytoplasm leading to the cell lysis. Okay. So, there are mainly two percentage of chlorhexidine that are usually administered on a routine basis. You have 0.2% and 0.12%. So, when 10 ml of 0.2% chlorhexidine solution is used as a mouthwash for one minute, then 30% of the drug is retained in the oral cavity. Uh, and due to its property of substantivity, it is bound to the oral cavity and it is released slowly over a period of 8 to 12 hours. So remember, this is an important MCQ question. The substantivity of chlorhexidine is 8 to 12 hours. Now, long-term studies have seen that there is no difference when we uh, administer 0.12 or 0.2% chlorhexidine. So 0.12 is equally effective in plaque inhibition as a mouth rinse when it is used twice daily. However, this is very important. Plaque control cannot be used as a supplement to scaling and root planing. So it cannot be used as a monotherapy. It has to be used as an adjunct to scaling and root planing. Now, what are the commercially available products? The 0.2% chlorhexidine is the rexidine, hexidine and Clohex, whereas 0.12% it is uh, available as Periogard.